All right, so in this video, we're going to be continuing building our Craigslist scraper project that we had in the previous two videos on this channel. If you missed parts one and two, I'm going to encourage that you watch those videos so you can understand what we have in this part of the video series. And just to make sure that we're up to speed with where we left on, off on part two, I'm going to go ahead and write this and then give it a run. So I'm going to say Python Craigslist scraper .py. And then this is where we were at at part two. It opens up a browser in Firefox. It forms a query based on information like location, et cetera. And then it ex extrapolates the title post information and also the URL information for each of the posts as well. So this chunk down here are all of the URLs for the items that we're interested in. And then this output chunk all up here is kind of the title information. So one thing we might want to do to improve upon this particular script, indeed the thing that we're going to be doing in this video, is we're going to extend some of this um, some of this formatting here. We're essentially going to take a post and we're going to try to extrapolate the date, the title, and also the price. Right now everything just kind of prints out in one massive wall of text, but maybe what we want to do is for each post you can notice that there's a date, there's a title, and there's a price. And we might want to do is we might want to extrapolate each of those items, put them into a list, and then maybe put them into a spreadsheet so we can store that information for a later date, or we can keep track of items that we're trying to track in Craigslist postings. So we're not going to store the information in a spreadsheet in this video, but we will be thinking about ways that we can break this content up and try to extract this information in a way that makes it a little bit more modular. So all right, so what we're gonna do here is we're just going to print out the result of what you can expect if you follow along in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the result of what the result will be if you follow along here. So we're gonna see a very similar start to this project. It's gonna open up the browser. It's going to pull the information, but here you'll notice that the information is a little bit more modular. So here I've put the title, price, and date. So each of these has the title, which is extracted, the relative price of that particular item, and the date in which the item was posted. So you can see that that is printed for each of these things individually. So you can store that information in a list. You could possibly put that into a spreadsheet. You could do a whole bunch of things with it, but it makes it a little bit easier to deal with once you have it in kind of this modular fashion here. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So we're back at the code now that we had at the end of part two. And what we want to do is we want to try to find a way to modify this code to give us what we had in the example script that we had just previously shown. So one thing that we're gonna do, one approach that we're going to take in this video is we're going to kind of take an experimental exploratory approach. That is, we're going to try to figure out how we can modify what we have so far and play with the way the website is designed to extrapolate that information, to extract that information from the website. So you're hopefully you'll, you'll kind of see a pattern here in terms of the back and forth experimentation from modifying some of this code and playing with it and noticing that it's not really perfect. Noticing that when you're doing something like this, no matter what the website is, it's going to be a bit of a back and forth process and it's going to be a bit of an experiment. So hopefully, whether or not you're scraping Craigslist or something else, you can kind of see the thought process that is present for this type of approach. And you'll notice that it's probably anything but perfect. And hopefully this thought process will kind of help you along in whatever project you happen to be building something like this for, whether it's this project or something else. Or if you take this and go and do something else with it, hopefully this approach will be applicable to future projects. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and try to change a few things here. First thing we're gonna change is we're going to modify this extract post titles function, and we're going to change this to extract post information. Because really, we're going to change this to extract the date, the price, and also the title itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that change is reflected down here in the main part of the function, or the main part of the file. And I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this line and that line because we want to limit the amount of output, so let's just get rid of URLs because that seems to be okay for the moment, and then we're not going to quit, so I'm just going to comment that out as well. Okay, so back up to the extract post information function now, and what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of remind ourselves what this information looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to go ahead and write this, or run it, so we're going to see what this information looks like. What does post.txt actually look like and how can we extrapolate the information that we're after? So we have our browser open up. We have the back of the screen populated. I'm going to close that just so it 
short circuits the code, and then we can see that each of the items look like this. So we've kind of got the pages ready message that pops up when we open the browser, and then we've got the price, some thing that looks like it's common to every uh, post, which tells you how many images are present. So image one of three, an option to favorite the post. Part of the meat of what we want to extrapolate here, which is the date, the title, and then the price. So we want to get at this thing right here, and then some other information, hide this posting, and then onto the next one here, we've got the price, how many images, favorite this post, title, hide this posting, the, the third item now. So you can kind of see a pattern there. So what we want to get at is we want to try to split the post text so we can end up with this thing right here. And then we want to modify this so we can get at the information that we're after. So let's go ahead and try to split the Let's go ahead and try to split the post.txt based on, uh, let's say, the dollar sign, because we're essentially trying to get at the, the price. So hopefully that will give us a little bit of information as to um, where things are, are, are lying in this, uh, this post.txt item. So let me show you what I mean by that. So instead of printing out post.txt, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go here and say title is equal to post.txt.split and we're gonna split based on the dollar sign. So hopefully that will split something, we'll get a list essentially, so title will now be a list. Part of it will be the stuff that precedes the dollar sign, the other stuff will be the actual price itself. So it's not gonna be perfect, we're going to have to whittle this down to get the information that we're after, but this will be kind of a step in the right direction, hopefully, to give us a sense of what this will, what this will um, give us at first anyway. So we've split the thing that's returned from post.txt by the dollar sign. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to print out title. We're going to see what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and run this again, and we're going to see what we get here. So we're going to see a list for each of the items now. So it's going to go ahead and run. I'm going to short circuit that. Go up here, and let's see what we got. So we have some lists. So this is the first item here. We've got nothing in the first element of the list. And then we have this, which is kind of the uh, part of what we want to get. So we've got the price image one of three, favorite this post, the date, the title, all that good stuff. Um, and then as I'm going through this data, it looks like there's a few, uh, there's a few things that might not be consistent. So for instance, take a look at this list here. This is an item. And take a look at this list up here. Sometimes the first element of the list of an item is empty. And sometimes the first element of a list is not. So sometimes it actually has something there. So we essentially want to make a check is the first element of this list empty? If it is, what we really care about is the second, the index one element of the list. And if the element of the list is, if the zeroth index of the element of the list is not empty, so in this case right here, we really want to get the this uh, this part of the of the list. We want to get that part of it there. Um, at least I think that's what we want. So again, we'll kind of go back and forth and experiment with this and see if that's kind of what we're actually after. So this is anything but a perfect process, but this will hopefully get us 90% of the way there. So I'm going to get rid of that print statement. We've split it based on the dollar sign. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say if title of zero is empty, so like we just checked if that's actually empty, what we're going to do is we want to get the first index of that list. So we're going to say title is equal to title of one. And then we're going to just print out the title and see what we get there. And then otherwise, if the title, if the first element or the zeroth index element of title is not equal to the empty string, we'll just go ahead and say title is equal to title of zero, and then we'll print out title there. So hopefully in either of these cases, we should get kind of the meat of what we're trying to extract from this post title. So let's go ahead and save that and run it and see what we get for these items. So it should pop open a browser here print out some stuff, we'll short circuit. Let's move up and see what we get here. So we've got this here, so page is ready, we've got our page is ready message, we've got the price, image one of three, favorite this post, and then this thing right here, which is the date and title, um, and then again, price, image one of four, favorite this post, date and title, and then and the third item. So what we want to extract here is the price, which seems to be the first element of this thing that we've, um, split and then it looks like this thing which is the date and title so we want to get that as well so we're going to want to split now not by 
like a dollar sign say, but we want to split based on the new line character because we have a new line here, which gets us to this thing, a new line here, which gets us to this thing, and a new line here, which gets us to the title here. So this is kind of one element. This is one element. And then this is one element. So we want to extract the price and the title. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So we've got our title thing here. And what we want to do is we want to split based on new lines. So I'm just going to go down past this if else statement because I think this is going to apply to either of these cases. We're going to say title is equal to title that split on new line. And then we're going to say title is equal to the last element in the list. And then we're just going to print that out. We're going to see what that looks like. So I've split based on new lines and then we're going to print out this thing right here, which hopefully will be the date and the title of what we're after. So let's go ahead and run this again and see what we get as output. So it looks like we're getting closer. So we've got this thing here, which is the date and the title. And it looks like it's actually printing that out for all of them until I short circuited here. So that's good. So we've got that so far. Now we still are missing the price. That's kind of cool. It prints out the symbol there. So we want to print out the price as well. So I believe if we say, let's say price is equal to title of zero, that should give us, and I'm, I'm gonna do that after the split here. So we have the title, we're splitting based on new line. Remember the price was the first thing that popped up. If I go back to the terminal here, not this output, but this output here, notice that when we were printing here, the first element of that list that we split on new line would be the price, image one of three, favorite this post, and then this thing, this was the last element of that list, that's how we're extracting the title. So we've got this part, we wanna get this part, so I want to extract the zeroth index of each of these of these items of the list. So that would give us 275, 100, 35, and so on. And so I'm just going to set that equal to the price. We've got our title there, and that should be uh, halfway there. So let's go ahead and print out, let's print out the price. And what we'll do here is we'll say, just to separate this out, we'll say price, and then we'll append that since that's just a string. And then we'll say print title, and then we'll append that as well so we can see what that looks like. So let's see what we got here. So let's run this again. Browser will pop up. We'll extract some of this information. I'll short circuit. So what do we have here? It looks like we're getting pretty close. So we've got our price, 275, and then the title. So it looks like that's for this thing here, price, title, price, title. So that looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So let's go back to the code. So we've got our price, we've got our title, and now we want to extract the day and the date. So the month and the day. So what we can do is that's really contained in this title here. So if we go back, let's just go back to the terminal. We essentially want to modify this title. So each of these titles, notice there's a certain pattern here. We have the three month code for the month, and then we have the day, so that's just a number there. So one thing that we can do, one way we can uh, kind of extract that information is we can treat this as a string and we can say split this string based on, on uh, spaces. So we can split it based on spaces. And if we then, that will give us a list. And so we can extract the first and second element of that list. And if we do that, that will give us the month and the day for each of the titles. So if we do that, that's hopefully going to give us, uh, hopefully that's going to work. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got our title here. Let's say that the month is equal to, so again, we're going to split. Let's actually do this. Let's say date is equal to title dot split based on a space. And then what we want to do is we want to say month is equal to date of zero because that's the, in this case, MAR for March. And then the second or the index one element of that split list will be the numeric day. So we can say day is equal to date of one. And then what we can do is we can just, let's go ahead and say date is equal to month plus, and then we'll give a space day. So what we can do here, instead of printing the whole title, because again, the title is going to consist of both the month and the year, maybe what we wanna do here, instead of modifying the date, is we'll say title is equal to this. And let's just take things one at a time here. I'm gonna comment these out. 
So we've got our title, we split it based on spaces. And what I want to do is I want to extract the date from that. So the date from that is the first, the zeroth index and the first index, that's okay. And then what I want to do is I want to say, actually title is equal to, I'll say title is equal to, I'm going to join that list back into a big string. So I'm going to say join title, but then I want to join the title from the second entry on in the list. So I want to ignore the index zero and one because that consists of March 16th. I don't want that in the title. So I'm going to take this list that we have here, we split based on space, and then I'm going to say, give me the month and the day because that is now, that would be title of zero and title of one. So I'm gonna go down here and make sure I can change this as well, title of one. So, and then when I get those things that I'm after, I'm going to say, okay, take the list that we have, which was split up by space, and then join it back into a string, but ignore the first two elements of that string. So that's what I'm doing here in this line. So hopefully, let's see if this actually works. We'll actually go back and say, uncomment that. So we have the date, which is equal to month plus day. And then we'll go down here and we'll say print date and then I'll say plus date. So let's see what we get. This may or may not work. Uh, so we have a syntax error here. That's because I did not put the dot. So I need to put a dot here. So it's this thing dot join. That should work. Let's go ahead and go back to this and see if this actually prints out what we expect. We got our browser. We've got output. Let's short circuit this. And it looks like we do have what we're after. So if I go back up here to the top, we have pages ready message, we've got our price, and then we've got the title. Notice that the March 16th is now absent from this title string because we cut that off. But however, if we print out date, which is what we did extract from the title before we chop that off, that is the month and the day, which is exactly what we wanted. So we've got the price, we've got the title, and we've got the date. So that's great. So we've got everything that we really want from this uh, post here. So one thing that we can do to clean this up a little bit is let me get rid of this post title list because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to modify this return statement and I'm going to get rid of this post title list append. So those three items that I just deleted, those three lines I just deleted were from part two. So we want to store the title, price, and list, uh, st sorry, title, price, and date. So I'm going to go back up above the for loop and I'm going to make three lists. Let's call them dates is equal to an empty list, titles is equal to an empty list, and also prices is equal to an empty list. So we've got those lists and those are going to be populated on each iteration of this for loop as we loop through every one of the posts that we uh, extract here. So we've got that. We've modified and tweaked these titles, prices, and dates accordingly and we've printed them out here. So we can print them out still, but in addition to that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append them onto the list. So I'm going to say titles.append title, dates.append date, and prices.append price. I'm actually going to put this, in, put this in between them just to make it a little bit more symmetric. So titles, prices, dates. And what we can do at the end of this function is we can return titles, prices, and dates. So we've got our list there. And so actually I am going to comment out these print statements here because we don't want to see so much output maybe. So we've commented out those print statements. I'm going to go down here to the main function and notice that we are calling this extract post information. And now it's returning three lists that should be populated with the appropriate titles, prices, and dates. So I'm going to go ahead and say titles, prices, and dates. So these would be three lists that we're going to define that are based, uh, that, that are going to be returned from this function that we just filled out here. And then if I print out, hopefully, if I print out the list that is returned from this function, let's say we print out titles, we should see a big blob, a big list of all of the titles that we've extracted from this query. So let's go ahead and write this, run it, and see what we get. So I'm not going to be able to short circuit this run of the code because we want to make sure that the function actually returns. So we'll go ahead and let it do its thing. 
and it did its thing. So we had the function run, it extracted all of the titles, prices, and dates, and the only thing that I'm printing out here is a big list that contains all of the titles of the things that we we're after. So this is the first title, this is the second title, this is the third, and so this big list just contains all of the titles of posts that we want to, uh, that we got from our query. So we could of course do the same thing with prices and dates as well if that's what we were after. Uh, and again, what we could do to kind of extend this script is we could take those things and we could put them into a big spreadsheet. We could have this script be run every day if we want to keep an eye on a particular item. Uh, we could run some statistics on the type of information that we get back. It really depends on what your goal is for getting this information. So again, these these sorts of videos hopefully will just serve as some sort of a springboard to get you maybe inspired about how to turn this into something for your own project and you can kind of take it from there. And you can also sort of realize that this process of extracting the title, the date, and the price was a bit messy and a bit sort of all over the place. It's a bit of experimentation to go from what you have from a website and also trying to kind of get that to play nicely with what your code is doing. So hopefully this back and forth process was illuminating. I hope so. I hope it wasn't frustrating to watch. If you like this type of content, please let me know in the comment section. The code, of course, will be uh, uploaded on my GitHub page, and the link for that will be in the description to this video. And if you found this content helpful, please do like the video and consider subscribing. So if you have any questions or anything like that, do leave them in the comment section. And if not, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again. Have a great day.